Welcome to Aftermath's Gold Challenge Mode Guide. I'm Marza, and this is Skullomance. So for Skullomance, we initially want to pull these two mobs and get them down. They're not particularly dangerous. Um, this is one of the easier challenge modes. I don't say I would recommend it as your first challenge mode, but it, if you're stuck on something else, this is a good one to come to. It didn't take very long at all. As these guys get low, we're going to want to pull the uh, first boss. Our healer has already opened the gate that was there. When you pull this boss, it's important to aggro him as you jump over before you aggro anything else. It will despawn everything in the room except those risen guards. You'll see that we stand in the middle here so that we don't aggro them. He puts a debuff on people and they need to get out from the group when that happens. You need to go forward or backward. Left or right is not a viable option. He also puts those frost circles on the floor that you saw right there. It looks like a very small ring of frost. Those will pretty much one-shot you if you stand in them. It's a fairly simple boss, though. You'll see that we use time warp on it as well. Mostly you just want to move forward and back and avoid lateral. So for phase two, the Lich goes into the phylactery. Nothing is particularly different about this, you just don't have a lot of room to move still because those mobs are up. As a melee, I don't have any problem, you know, sort of circling around this thing and avoiding the fire, but the casters tended to just stand in it and the healer would deal with it because it was better to kill it quickly than to worry about avoiding things. Also, where they're standing right there, they only get hit by one book maybe every 15 seconds or so. It's not a lot of damage. After you kill this boss, you need to be very careful not to aggro that risen guard. You see we snuck right by him. He does not path all the way to the door, so you pretty much always have a clear way. But if he's closer to it, you will need to make sure to hug the bookcases. For this next room, we were pulling initially with this guy at much higher HP, but we found that he wouldn't die very quickly. That's why we're attacking for so long. If you can get him down comfortably, you can pull sooner, this next group. The candlestick mages are what you really need to watch out for, they do a lot of damage. And they are the sole reason that we are not pulling more trash yet. Once we get them low, we will add more to this group. There are two more candlestick mages in this pack, or actually three more. Uh, the other stuff over here that I'm pulling now you can safely grab because it doesn't really do anything, it's just the mages that are painful. One of the keys to doing this instance quickly is quickly deciding which Jandis Barov is clone and which one is really her. I will not purport to be the best at it, our warlock was very good at it, but also you don't have to be flawless at it by any means. You just don't want to take too long, you should get it within the first couple guesses. Just like normal mode, make sure she's faced away for she does watch with stupidity. So here what you're looking for in the illusion, always look at the portrait. You can see I have portraits enabled on my target. I did not until this fight came out. You want to look at her hair, her headband, and her shoulders primarily. They should all be black and they should be the correct shape. Once you see one that matches, um, you want to look at the belt. The belt 
also needs to be black and gray. And that's what will tell you that you have the real one. You can see right here that we were actually very bad at finding the correct one this first time out. It should give you an indication that, you know, you, you have some slack with this instance. The timer is not super unforgiving. This time we got the real one right away, and that makes a big difference in terms of making up time from the previous. We're constantly, as we go through these runs, looking at our average time for each boss, how long we need to kill them, what time we're taking as we get to them. So although the first one took a long time, the second one being instant meant we were still on a good pace after we killed Janus. I wouldn't recommend resetting just because you're off pace unless you're wildly behind. It's, it's always good to get more experience on the rest of the instance. This pull can be a bit tricky. We have our hunter misdirecting the left side and you can see me aggroing all of the right side bone weavers. They do a frontal cone bone shards that does a lot of damage. So what you want to do is we have all the ranged off to the left where they will not get hit as I get pelted with bone shards and we pull everything around the corner back here. This is a fairly damaging group, but it's not super bad. Just make sure you're stopping them. Everyone should pick up the bone shield while this RP is going on. And anytime they get hit with the bone shard, they should pick up another one. Battlegore himself is not very different from normal, he just hits harder. Uh, we use our hunter to taunt and pull him away, and I taunt him back. But you can also just kite him yourself around the room if you need to reset his rest stacks. I would recommend doing it around 6 stacks, if possible. And just every time he hits someone and they lose their bone shield, they need to grab another one. You can see right here, unfortunately, that our hunter got hit, so his rusting did not reset. We have to kite him around a little longer. Once he gets down to about 25% or 30%, if you've reset him recently, you should be able to just tank him the rest of the way for him, as we're doing here. For this room, um, the damage intake is fairly high. I would not recommend pulling more than you need to. The way it works is you need to focus down the meat grafts in order to kill the large abomination. And there is a debuff that jumps between mobs, much like the plague on Lich King, that causes them to deal more damage and take more damage, and it doubles every time that it jumps the number of stacks. So you want to get this down to just a couple of these carvers left. Um, ideally the high ones that were in the patrol, you can see they have more health than the other ones. 
And once we have a fair amount of these dead, I'm going to pull the next group onto it so that we can keep that debuff rolling. It also means that I need to sort of kite them a bit, because the damage that they do is extremely high. We can blow them up quickly, but I also don't want to get gibbed. This was the most common pack that would kill the tank in this instance. Once you've got it down to just this big guy, you can see the carver is essentially melted because of the debuff. You can just kill the grafts and move on. Lillian Voss is not very different from the heroic version. I could not tell you off the top of my head if she even does anything in this first phase. It certainly doesn't look like it, does it? Remember to keep burning her as she's doing this RP and her soul is coming out. And once the soul comes out, you want to be multi-dotting or clicking both of them, because you're going to need to kill both. We decided it did not seem realistic or worthwhile to try and burn her before the soul came out. In the soul phase, you just need to not get meleeed by her when she's chasing you. Here it's chasing our warlock and you can just teleport across the room. Makes it very easy. For this last phase, everybody's going to get death gripped in, and you're going to get a debuff that causes you to start dropping fire trails behind you, as well as Lillian still chasing people. We did not have a melee heavy comp, in fact I'm the only melee, so I just kind of laid my puddles around in melee range and stayed in range of the boss. If you had more melee though, I suppose what would be best would be to keep part of the room clear and pull her there after the uh, fires dropped. She might do it one more time, but odds are you'll only get one, and at most two, so it should be fairly easy to deal with. It's also nice to be close to each other because she jumps on people like that, but it's not necessary. So at this point we need, I know the counter in the corner is broken, but we need ten more mobs before we can kill the last boss. So what we opt to do is pull this first group here and kill them before we are going to use an invisibility potion. Which also means you cannot use an invisibility potion on Lillian Voss. Uh, excuse me, a DPS potion. These board students cast a Shadow Bolt or Shadow Nova on a person that causes an AE, so you actually don't want to clump up and you see we took a lot of damage there, so I started to LOS them. You don't necessarily need to LOS them there, but since we were getting pelted pretty hard, decided it would be good to stop them casting for a moment. Usually there's only one or two casters in a group of these students. That time there were three, I believe, and so we were taking excess damage. So here we use a 15 second potion. You don't need it for very long at all, just to get across the room. The potion on the desk there from the professor boss I would recommend picking one up in normal Skullamans. You can see we all have the buff before doing this instance. It is very quick, it doesn't take you very long to go through it, and it is well worth it. It will do a lot of extra damage to the last boss as a function of it. 
you don't need it to complete the zone, but on the attempt prior to this, we actually missed gold by about five seconds because of other mistakes and realized we would have gotten it if we had the potion. So it's worth getting. It persists through death and it lasts an hour. So we pulled the second pack of five students after we invisited because that was the last five enemies we needed and now we are at 35 out of 35 even though you can't see it. For this last boss, the incinerates he does hit very hard, especially if he immolates you. So you want to try to use anything you can to get rid of immolate if possible. Ideally I would have anti-magic shelled that immolate for instance. He still teleports people into the rooms. Um, you need to kill them quickly and get out. In this case it's fairly... Um, well, somewhat unfortunate that he ports the tank first because he's going to aggro someone else and start shooting them. Those failed students that you see that he resurrects, sort of like an army of the dead that he casts, you do not want your tank to tank those. They hit extremely hard. You want them to aggro on your healer or your other ranged. If the healer gets teleported, the other ranged need to start AEing so that they can pull aggro on it, and they can kill it on the way up. But you can see at a certain point in this video, I think right here, I get aggro on some of them, despite my best efforts, and they do a lot of damage to me. So I have to kite them around for a while, and just generally do my best to not die right here. Um, if you don't pull aggro on them on the first place, that won't be an issue, but it's something to watch out for. And that's pretty much all that you need to do for this boss. He shouldn't take too long to kill. A couple minutes. Um, the tank damage is high, but strategically he's fairly simple. If you get here with a couple minutes left, you should have your gold. Hope you found this guide helpful, so subscribe, check out our website, and visit me on Twitch. Thanks.